All right, you guys, today we're gonna to talk about the RAMP protocol from chapter 14 of the NSCA textbook. So the RAMP protocol stands for raise, activate, and mobilize. Those are kind of together, and then potentiate. It's a warm-up protocol that the NSCA put together um, to ensure that athletes arrive at their training session ready for training and ready to get the most out of training. So first, the R in the RAMP protocol, raise. What we're trying to do here is raise the heart rate, raise your blood pressure, raise the sweat rate, raise your breathing rate, and raise your body temperature. So we're doing this through uh, about five minutes of general activity. Uh, it could be jumping rope, it could be running in place, it could be jogging a lap, um, it could be getting on the exercise bike, or the air bike, anything that generally raises those qualities. <clears throat> and you could do it more specifically too. So if you're a soccer athlete or you have a soccer athlete, you could be you know, jogging on the pitch or doing some easy, um, ball footwork or something to raise the heart rate. If you're a swimmer, obviously you could do this in the pool. Uh, if you're about to do uh, some sort of weightlifting movement, you could do some dynamic stretching, dynamic uh, mobility before your session for that raise part of the ramp protocol. The next part, activate and mobilize. What we're trying to do is activate specific muscle groups that will be used in the activity during practice and mobilize joints that we need to get full range of motion. So we're doing targeted activations and mobilizations. These are, these are typically dynamic, so we're not doing a lot of static stretching. Maybe we're doing dynamic stretching or um, dynamic uh, stretching and mobilization sequences. We're doing targeted activations like glute activations, maybe some uh, upper back, uh, you know, posterior chain activations um, to really target the musculature that may be uh, not quite as activated due to a seated posture during the day or arriving at the session in the morning. Uh, when you're not fully awake yet. And then finally, the last stage, potentiate. Potentiation means to raise the effectiveness of the subsequent activity. So in the potentiate part of the warm-up, what we're doing are very specific, uh, specific to the training session, movements that start to increase in the velocity or the movement pattern specificity to the task at hand. So if we're about to go squat, maybe we're doing some jump squats. If we're about to go sprint, well, maybe we're doing some, um, some sort of light plyometric activity or maybe some strides to be very specific to the task, uh, but we're still sort of ramping up to, uh, to that full training intensity. So the warm-up should take no more than about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. It should go through the raise, activate and mobilize, and the potentiate uh, portions or sequences, and it should leave athletes optimally prepared to get the most adaptation that they can out of their training session.
If you found this video at all helpful or informative, give it a like, and if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'd be happy to answer them. And finally, if you're studying to become a certified strength and conditioning coach through the NSCA, stay tuned for more videos. I'll be updating my channel regularly, uh, not only with chapter introductions, but also with uh, deeper dives into each of the topics in those chapters so that we can master the content together um, and so that you have the best potential for uh, passing the certification test.